Rule two, the court. One of the first things we do as referees when we enter a facility is to check the court and the surrounding areas. Keep in mind, if you do this with your partner, things will go much smoother. There's an old saying that says two sets of eyes are better than one, and it's a perfect principle for completing the pre-match duties. Knowing the rules regarding the court will not only help us complete our pre-match duties, but will also help us effectively referee the match. Did you know that it's recommended that the area above the court be clear of any obstructions and at least 23 feet high? Many of the gyms that we referee in are at least this, but there are several in our area that have obstructions and are certainly not 23 feet high. Keep in mind it's a recommendation. It's also recommended that all boundary lines be of one clearly visible color contrasting to the color of the floor and other lines on the floor. And we certainly know that that's not always the case. There's not a whole lot that we can do about that, but it's definitely worth knowing. One thing that we can control is the amount of space outside the boundary lines. When checking our court, we need to make sure there's at least six feet and preferably 10 feet of unobstructed playable area outside the boundary lines. For instance, sometimes we might be checking a court and notice that the scores table and team benches are relatively close to a sideline. We can go ahead and take action in moving those back to create at least six feet of space. Remember, the six feet of space, and if not 10, is on all boundary lines, sidelines and end lines. Another focal point when checking your court is to check the center line. We would prefer our center line to be continuous and complete, but we know that this isn't always the case. Lots of schools have logos painted on the floor that breaks up our center line. Now the center line doesn't need to be all of one color, nor does it need to be solid. A shadowed or bordered center line is permissible. As long as we can distinguish the center line from one sideline to the other, that is permissible. We can complete this with tape if necessary. In contrast to the center line, the attack lines on either side of the court shall be solid and of one clearly visible color. Sometimes we overlook our service area. Our service area is distinguished by short lateral limited lines, basically hash marks, about six inches long and are extensions of each side line. Remember, our service area must be a minimum of six feet in depth, same as our playable area earlier. If that space is not available, the service area can extend into the court whatever distance necessary to provide that minimum depth. Make sure it's marked. If you know your playable area, you must also know your non-playable area. That's the space located beyond the court and the surrounding playable area. It includes things such as walls, bleachers, the team benches, the area behind the benches, and any other area identified in the pre-match conference that's deemed by the first referee as unsuitable for playable area.